This is Peak Generalization Spending Money 7B. This program is pretty straightforward and you can run it in a couple different ways. Um, I'm just going to show you a few different material samples that we've used um, for this program. I don't have it written out on the sheet, but um, you would just for your train and your test stimuli for this first one I'm going to show you, you would just write on there what the item is and how much it is for your train side. And then again, how much certain items are um, and what the items are for your test stimuli. So I'm just going to show you this first sample. I'm going to back out a little bit so you can see it all. So the first one, we did a menu where we had a train side and a test side. So we had a puzzle was four cents, a book is 10 cents, a sticker is 25 cents, and an animal toy is one set. And so those again are all going to be intermixed in with your train items. So puzzle is 10 cents, book is 25 cents, sticker is one cent, animal toy is four cents. So in this um, example, we used the same four items, but they were one priced in the train side and one price in the test side. And then we just went on ahead and found those real items for that kiddo to purchase. So this was the toy. So again, for the train side, if they would pick the toy, you know, that would be four cents and they would give us four cents. If we were doing the test side and they picked the toy, then it would be one cent for that same toy. Um, so again, with generalization, you're going to be intermixing train and test stimuli within one block. Um, so for those train stimuli, you're going to be prompting and reinforcing. So if you're on this side and let's say they give you five cents for the animal toy you can work through that with them help them get to four cents prompt accordingly but if you're on the test side and it's one cent and they give you four cents it's incorrect obviously they would get a zero and you would just move on to the next one so that's just kind of one example and then we just usually had it kind of depends on the learner if they can handle it you can kind of just have all the money in a pile for them another way we've done it before is where we would put out 10 cents four cents in a pile and 25 cents in a third pile, give them kind of a field of three. So then if they're doing, you know, let's say the puzzle is four cents and we're like, okay, it's time to buy the puzzle. It costs four cents. Then they would have this to pick from and hopefully they would pick the four cent amount. But same thing if it's on the test side and you're using that method, um, you wouldn't be obviously giving any feedback if they picked the wrong pile of coins. Um, another version of this program that we just wrapped up with was having a train menu and a test menu kind of similar to what I just showed you. So we would have, for example, this page would be all of our test stimuli. This page was all of our train stimuli. And for this one, we actually usually ran it five train or five test in a row and then switch to train or test from the other section. So like, let's say we were running this one. Again, all of your amounts and numbers would be clearly marked on here. So for the train side, you know, you would have on there four cents, eight cents, three cents, one cent, six cents, and two cents. So you would have all of those listed for the train menu. And for this test menu, you would have on this side one cent, five cent, two cent, three cent, seven cent, two cent. And so again, you would just, for example, with this one, we had two different bags of materials. So for our test stimuli, we used this menu and these fish. So we would place these out in random order and we would just, if we were starting with test, we would just run five trials of test. So for this, we would say, okay, which fish would you like to buy? And let's say they picked this one. Then we would say, okay, it's this much. And in this sample for this um, material set, we just used pennies. So the kiddo would have the entire pile of pennies and we would say, okay, the orange fish is this much. And they would hopefully count out one, two, three pennies. And then they'd have this pile left. We would hold the three pennies. Okay, what fish do you want to buy next? Let's say they pick this one. Okay, it's this much. And then they would give us two cents. Again, this is the test model, so we would not be able to give any feedback. Ideally, though, if let's say they got down to the very end and they had one fish left because you're going to run the five trials of the test first, for example, and you're like, okay, this red fish is this much. That's the one that you picked. And let's say they only have six cents. Hopefully they would notice that. And we've had kiddos that'll then say, no, not enough. 
and that would give them a 10. So they might be running out of money, but they're still able to, able to tell you that they're out of money. So then just to run through, I think you get the idea, but just to show you the train side, we just had different stimuli that we could put out in any order. For example, this kiddo really loves Paw Patrol. Who doesn't love Paw Patrol? But um, So we would again give back that big pile of pennies and do our next five trials with train and then we would be giving feedback. So when you're starting this one off, you might want to be doing your five train first and then move to five test and then as they get a little bit better and more confident, then you could flip it. Um, so again, if they were like, oh, I want to buy Sky, then we would say, okay, it's this much. And they would give us three cents. We would prompt, praise, reinforce, whatever we needed to do. We keep the three cents and we would keep going. So then hopefully again, if we get down to one where they pick like six cents or something and they only have five cents left, hopefully they would say, no, not enough and tell us that they didn't have enough for their fifth toy. So that's just a couple different ways you could run this. Um, you could also have different components to something that they're building. So you could kind of withhold different pieces, have them cost different amounts. And then as they earn and purchase those things, they could build something out of it if they're a little bit older. Um, so it just kind of depends. You could make it unique to whoever you're doing these programs with, but that just kind of gives you a couple ideas of what you could do with spending money 7B from peak generalization.